Grace and peace, everybody, and welcome to part number four of our five-part series on sharing the word. We're excited to get to it today because now we're going to talk about sharing the word. But we pray first that in Jesus' name, Father, you'd speak to our hearts. We thank you for always giving us a word of encouragement and exhortation, instruction. Amen. Instruction for what? Instruction to, to do, instruction to, to practice. But we don't do it to be saved. We do it because we are saved, because he's been so good to us. One of the things that we can do to be good back to him is to share his goodness, to tell somebody else what he's done. We talked about in our previous study about applying the word. And now, obviously, that application is by extension going to become the practice of giving that word to others, sharing that word to others. So looking at what God's word is creative and understanding how it has a power to change our lives or sanctify us, we want to apply it. And we apply it, one of the ways we apply it is by living it through teaching it. Let's talk about that now because when we know now that the word is a shaper, we are the sharers. We know our role. In other words, if we know that the word is the shaper of people's hearts, we then become the sharers of that word to people's hearts. We don't have to do what God has himself said he'll do, but only we can do what the Lord has asked us to do. See, in Acts chapter 420, we cannot speak but the things which we have seen and heard. This is what the apostles were saying to the religious leaders who were actually trying to persecute them, not trying, but they were persecuting them for sharing the word. And they say, we can't help but give what's been given to us. So see, when we give, we got to be mindful. Don't go trying to give what you don't got. <laughs> that's a disappointment. You know how you see the people going around delivering food now that's popular. And could you imagine someone with their, their, their Domino's or their Papa John's warmer, pizza warmer, and they're coming up to the door and you're excited and the children are looking through the blinds and, and they open up their, their warmer and there's nothing in it. Not only are you disappointed, but you're upset. And the same thing can happen when we go about saying, I got to go witness, I got to go test for, I got to go preach. But our box, our, our warmer is empty. It's cold even. We got to share what we've seen and heard. And, and when we do that, we've got other promises that, hey, Isaiah 50 verse 4 says, the Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth me morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learn. Love this verse because it's showing us that he speaks to every one of us. And if he is speaking to you, please remember this. If he is speaking to you, that means on some level and in some way he wants to speak through you. Even if it's just a matter of, okay, I don't, that doesn't mean every time he talks to me, I got to give a sermon or I got to give a message. No, that means if he tells you to do something and when you obey your obedience or your cooperation of not even saying anything, but just doing it, when you do it, he's going to have the person in the right place in the right place to see what you've done or have the person to know what you've done or have the person to receive what you, you, you get my point? It's not always talking when it comes to sharing the word. By applying that word in your life, you're sharing that word even if just by being faithful to it. So when you go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, where we're told to preach the word, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's just the outright commendation given to Timothy from his mentor, Paul. Tell people the gospel, share the gospel verbally, giving a word. And this is the second verse we've read today where it talks about being in season. That's basically saying on time. You know, right now in the summer when this is being recorded, it's time for nectarines and peaches and plums and strawberries and they taste great. But I really, I'm not feeling the, the peaches and nectarines and stuff in December. Are they there in the store? Yes, they're expensive, but they're there. Why? They're there, but they're not in season. They're not in the, the high point or the zenith or the ripening process where those sugars get in and they're at their, it's just good. But when it's out of season, it's, it, it, it's a good thing, but it's not as sweet. It can even be untimely or a bitter fruit or a bitter word. Knowing when to say when is just as important as knowing what to say. And that's the job of the word. The word 
is the shaper. But if we make the agreement and make the decision, I'll be a sharer. The Lord will always let it be in the right time, in the right place, because we've done it when He's asked us, when He's asked us to do it, or to say it, share it. <laughs>